record this. And you know, tonight is Motsi Yomta, Motsi Shabbos. Pesach is over, the summer is coming. Zat Hashem, we will, uh, we will talk, um, we'll start about talking about the Baal Shem Tov. The Lava Malka of the Baal Shem Tov, so we'll talk about a little story of the Baal Shem Tov, and then we'll go ahead and start changing over the, the kitchen and everything. <laughs> yes. All right. So we're talking about the time that uh, the Neshama of the Holy Baal Shem Tov came to this world. The father of the Baal Shem Tov, his name was Rabbi Eliezer. Once he became a prisoner, uh, and they brought him to a very far land where there were no, no, uh, no, um, no Jews at all. And there they sold him to to one, you know, one minister. After a while, that 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 uh, minister gave him to the the viceroy, the second in command to the king. So he will serve him. Now that second that the king loved uh, Rabbi Yezer very much, and. Uh, after he passed away, this viceroy, Abiyazah himself became the second of the king. You know, he was the advisor to the king, was very trusted. So the king gave Abiyazah the daughter of the viceroy to as a wife. Now, but Rabbi you know, he was a Jew, and she was a goitus. He he didn't, and he never came close and never touched her. So after a while, she turned to him and says, tell me, you know, what fault has you found in me that you have never touched me? So he told her that he was Jewish, and Jews were not allowed to live in that land. And, you know, in those days, they didn't fool around. Anybody was 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 found to be a Jew. I mean, he would he would be killed. I mean, it was human life didn't mean anything. So that's why he he actually hid his his the fact that he's a Jew. When she heard when she heard that, she gave him a lot of money, you know, a large amount of money, and sent him on his way. And along the way, again, robbers attacked him and took all his money. And that night, uh, Leah Novi came to him in a dream and told him that in the merit of, of, of the Nisoyan that you had, you know, with her and you didn't touch her, you will have a son that will illuminate the eyes of the entire Israel. And, and he he will say about him, about your son, you see, Israel Um And when Rabbi Leza came to his house, he and his wife, you know, were already elderly. And uh, that year, the promise of Anovi came true, and they became, they had a son. And they call him Israel. Um, and then uh, the Shama of the Balshanta was so high that there was absolutely no ability for this Shama to come down to this world if his father would have any kind of physical taiva. So that's why his father was very, very old. You know, by the time he was born, some say that he was like a hundred. Uh, that he he didn't have any physical urge 
you know, so so it was all pure for the mitzvah. Uh, the tzaddikim of the from the Kali and the Hasidus say that the neshama, like the neshama of the Baal Shem Tov, comes to the world once in a thousand years. Uh, there are uh, there are there's a different story that that espouses why you know how the Nisham Dvashem came to the world, which is different than this one. And according to the second story, um, the uh, the the father of Baal Shem Tov was a merchant, and he acquired um, a gem, a very, very expensive gem, um, and uh, I'm not sure what was the setting, and either the king or, or the uh, the high priest of that land, whatever, wanted to buy that gem in order to use it for their Avodazar. And uh, they offered him a huge amount of money for that gem. So the story goes that Rabbi Eliezer, the father of Baal Shem Tov, um, threw the gem into the sea so that you wouldn't be forced to sell it to be used for what is ours. So that's this car was when the Baal Shem Tov was born. That is the uh, the second version of that particular story. So if we'll just take a look. Uh, at the Sikh Saran and we'll take a look at something that we can learn tonight. Let's take a quick look. Okay, so we have the Sikh Saran uh, this is a Sichos Sameches, which is 68. Rabbeinu has warned us many times on this Indian of speaking between you and the Kaddish Baruch Hu, that every person needs to speak to a Kaddish Baruch Hu and really reflect, what, what am I doing in this world? A big achmonus on himself and he spread his hands in supplications and begging and ask and beg for Baruch Hu that will give him and will give him the, the opportunity to get close to Avodah Hashem. And a person needs to find all kinds of reasonings, all kinds of complaints and pleading on this thing. He says, I mean, I said that. That 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 sicha needs to be in in the language that people speak, you know, in English or Yiddish or whatever the native tongue is. But he spoke to us about this a lot, again and again and again. He says anybody that will get himself used to doing this on 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 a daily basis, at least. One hour, it says Bevadai will merit to get close to Kodesh Baruch Hu. And even if sometimes a person sees that he's doing it already for years, days and years, and still he didn't get closer, you know, properly, still hold yourself steadfast more and more. At the end, Bevadai will help. And he says that David the Melech all of a Shalom did from that Sefer Tehillim. And he said the many Zbeda do, so David the Melech was on his bed. When he laid in his bed and he covered himself with a sheet, then he would talk and talk to Kodesh Baruch Hu everything. 
as it is said in, in Psalms, I will, I will speak every night on my bed with my tears. And he says, happy is the person who will get himself used to doing this. He says, because this particular conduct is the highest of all Avodis Hashem. And see the Chut of Tanina, you know, in the Chut of Moran, in Daflam at base, look, whatever it is that it's said, and get yourself used to doing all these things. Hashem Ismach will help you to be able to open your mouth and really uh, talk to Kaddish Baruch Hu, BMS. There's obviously not enough words to exalt and to explain how important this particular hunger is. It's the hardest thing to do. Because when you come to a Kaddish Baruch Hu and you come to speak to him, usually what happens is, is that there is a wall which is a fictional wall. It's a wall that is made out of thought. That you can't speak, or you don't have what to say, or whatever it is that you have to say is not worth saying. And whatever it is that is worth saying, you don't really feel like talking about. <laughs> and to yourself, you're just sitting there or standing there, and your mind wanders all over the place. And you figure, like, what on earth am I doing here? What is going on? That is the this the the, the scorpions and the creepers that are around. It's the core of Kedusha that lays inside of the Sinyan of his Vitamus. And a person needs to stick with it and sit there and stick with it and ask Kedush Baruch to help him. Sometimes sitting there without saying anything. Sometimes sitting there with just saying, Rabbi Nishabad, Rabbi Nishabad, Rabbi Nishabad, a thousand times, just Rabbi Nishabad. It seems like, like, what am I doing? You know, what, what what am I accomplishing with this? The answer is everything. Everything. Accomplishing absolutely everything. Because you are breaking down walls, and the the resoluteness of getting into this particular avoda is the most important thing that a Jew can do for himself. Hashem should help us all. That we should be zeichel to do this particular conduct and stick to it and be stubborn about this and do it. And be zeichel without Hashem. So, without Hashem, we will conclude with this, being that there's a lot of work to do, cleaning the kitchen and everything. But at least we were able to learn and and to do something and talk about the Baal Shem Tov, talk about Vedadus. And without Hashem, Hashem should help us that we'll meet Monday again. That's Hashem. Hashem should help us. We'll go back to to our routine, learning uh, Sipuri Maisis. Um, so you should have a good evening and a good summer, and a healthy summer, and a holy summer for you and for me and for all of us and for Israel. <laughs>